web applications, JSON and Ajax. So let's start with JavaScript object notation, which is called JSON. Plenty of times we have a need to transfer data between uh, different systems. Uh, for example, our server and the browser, we need to transfer data or we can uh, we need to data from external service. And there needs to be a standard way of conveying information so that it can be processed in both ends. And these kind of a standards, we have XML and we have JSON. These are pretty useful. Um, and of course, JSON as its JavaScript object notation is often used when data is processed with JavaScript. They are very good functioning together. And so JSON uh, can be a bit shorter and more readable, but it's uh, basically a matter of taste. Someone uh, prefer XML. But here is a simple example of a, a person and its uh, uh, features, attributes. There is this guy called Thomas King Raihela who has an age of 27 and lives in Lappeenranta and has two, two mobile phones and their, their numbers. The left side, the data is presented is in JSON format and the, and the right side, it's presented in XML format. It's one-to-one, uh, -one, same data, but different presentation. Personally, I like more JSON, but if you like more XML, then please use XML. It's, uh, it's totally up to you. Although there are external services that provide only JSON or only XML, then you have to use that. But, but in, the, in the real life, it really doesn't matter. You can use both in your own programming. And <coughs> how we handle JSON, it's essentially key value pairs, person, Thomas, phone number, 666, these kind of a key value pairs. Uh, JSON can include arrays and nested structures as the previous example showed. Uh, and these structures, they can be transferred over the network between server and client. JSON can be stored to database as it is if you want and retrieve from third-party services and you can parse JSON quite easily with JavaScript. And then JSON in practice. So as said, JSON and JavaScript work quite well together. So JavaScript has functions to handle JSON. So we have this JSON parse to generate JSON object from a string. So in the the right side we have a short uh, JSON. If this is provided as a string to this JSON parse, it generates a JSON object from a, this string. And it, it the syntax is pretty simple. Uh, similarly, if we have a JSON object, we can use JSON stringify to generate string from this uh, object. So it's it's reversed method to that JSON pores. And let's have an example on JSON. Okay, let's talk about a bit this JSON. We have this uh, test JSON uh, string or object in, in the slide. Let's now try it. So we have a JSON and we can lock out, let's say we could get the age and let's see what happens. So what will be printed in the console? There will be 25, which was the age. So it's working as supposed to. Uh, then we can use this uh, stringify. No, no, no string of right there, but this JSON object and its stringify uh, method. And what happens then? We got a typo there. Now it's working. 
So now the whole object was printed out as a string and then then we could get this JSON string. Let's take this one. No, JSON string is this JSON object when it's stringified and now we can then then put it back to JSON object with this JSON parse method and let's take this JSON string there and then we can now it's uh, parsed back to object and we can get the school out of it let's see yeah we got the LUT so this is a JSON object here in this variable we can get the objects uh, uh, inner variable mem class um, object member and then we can use this JSON uh, stringify to um, print out this object as a string and then parse that string back to JSON object and after it's back to object we can uh, get its attributes if we want quite easy and then the next topic here is this asynchronous javascript and xml ajax when we are showing a web page we used to require always full page load so the every html element uh, was required to transfer from the server to the browser and this ajax asynchronous javascript and xml provides us the way that we can transfer more data or less data without reloading the page as the term says it's a synchronous call and this is used for example when you are using google search and there is this these suggestions and new content are in google maps when you scroll the map there is new content coming and the page is not reloading but uh, the app gets new data in the background it uses these ajax calls and ajax is supported in all modern browsers that's another problem it was actually the first time it was used it was a microsoft windows update web page and uh, microsoft had implemented a way that you could get new content to that web page without uh, reloading the page and then then hackers find out that okay Microsoft is using this this fancy method maybe we should have that in other browsers too and soon we had the A Ajax support in every browser although Microsoft used a different way than all the other browsers then in the end they also used the similar method nowadays and you should still show something to an user who has disabled JavaScript. So if you, your browser does not have JavaScript enabled, then you cannot use any modern web app. And Ajax is useless if there is no JavaScript available. So what is this Ajax architecture? So we have a... Uh, client side which is the browser and we have the server side which we will discuss uh, further in, in future videos so in in the conventional model we had the web browser in the client side and the web browser is showing this html css user interface and then we have the server side and there is some kind of server software apache nginx or or something like that tomcat whatever and there might be a database so the server is discussing with database and providing data from the database that's al also possible but when the user for example clicks some link on the web app then their uh, browser is generating http request to server and the server is providing some html css data back to the browser and then it's shown to the user in the browser window and every time you wanted to get new 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 data new html 
to user interface you would require to do full page reload and full HTTP request. And then we have this Ajax, Ajax model. We have all, uh, the very same web browser and the user in, interface in the web browser. And then we have the server side. It's completely similar or a bit different. Depends. There might be databases or not. But now we have the H XML HTTP request object that we are using in the in the JavaScript code. So first, when you are clicking a, 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 for example, some kind of link or button, we are making a JavaScript call to the XML HTTP request object, which then generates HTTP request to the server and the server returns something. It can be, for example, JSON object or string, or it can be XML or, or, or plain text or image or whatever, but pretty often it's, it's JSON data. And then this uh, JSON data is handled and it's then provide uh, then we are providing new HTML and CSS to the user interface. And not the whole web page is required to reload or the user itself doesn't even know this all the time that the uh, browser is communicating with the server. Uh, Ajax in practice, so this name is uh, including XML, but the content doesn't have to be an XML. 20 years ago, uh, the XML was, was de facto way to move uh, data from server to the browser, but nowadays uh, we are using more JSON, so J Ajax could be AJ. So XML would have been replaced with JSON. But the term that we are using is still Ajax, although we are not using XML. And the XML HTTP request object is the magic behind Ajax. And we have no real need nowadays to create the XML HTTP request by ourselves, we have uh, libraries that handle these automatically. jQuery, Axios, Super Agents, etc. They have the support for Ajax request. You can get the libraries from their websites. And then when we are discussing React, we are learning better ways to implement and utilize Ajax. But nowadays, JavaScript itself provides this uh, fetch method, which can be used to get uh, data from server or from third-party uh, API. And it uses this new, newer format, with, with, which has come with the newer version of JavaScript. So let's have an example on this. So let's continue and with a real uh, JSON. Let's get rid of this our simple semi fake JSON. And now we will add a second button here to get uh, uh, stuff from actual real API. First, we will uh, modify a bit this code so, so that we have a, a new function to uh, have this uh, poem adding process. So let's add new function called add new poem. And it gets a poem and the VIP values as a parameter. And then we can uh, get code from this, this event listener to that function. So basically all these. So we have the wall, then we create a new element, we check. Now we are not checking anything, we are just... Uh, we are checking, but we are not checking at this VIP status, we are just setting, uh, checking this variable, if it's uh, uh, true or not. We can actually move this, this here too. And 
Uh, I think this is quite okay. Well, we are not using poem input, but the poem uh, which comes here as a parameter. And then we should uh, call this new method of ours. Let's see. So we want to keep it as a uh, this poem uh, input dot value and uh, uh -huh. this is not what we did want. We wanted to have just value and this VIP dot check. Let's check that if it is still working. At least we got something there. Yeah, seems to be working. And now we are adding the new button. We need new button here. Add your poem from API. Let's call it like this one and then we can add a new event listener. Let's copy paste this. We need to add new poem from API. Let's add an event listener there and then we are not using these at all. Yeah, but in the end we want to add something something to that function but what and how now comes the new part there are several ways to uh, get uh, json or xml from api i'll show two of them here let's start with this first one so we are going to create load json JSON method which we can add here function load JSON it takes no parameters first we will need some kind of a URL where we are getting this stuff and I have this URL here we can go and see what it is so here we have just random Stuff. We have a user ID, ID, title and body elements in this, <coughs> this JSON API and there are actually 100 elements in this, this API. But it could be any API that provides us, us JSON. So we need to get that, that uh, JSON to our code and this is how we can use it. First we build the URL, then we need the response that the URL is getting, giving us and that's when the fetch comes in and, and that is giving us the URL. But now as uh, JavaScript is working pretty much asynchronous and synchronous, we will need, uh, have to be sure that this is done before we are going any further further we will need to have a weight here and to use a weight we need to specify that this function is asynchronous and now we can continue now we have the response and then we can get the new poems from this response once again we have to uh, wait a bit when we are getting the response json we could get text but as we want json we will use this json method and now we can console log actually this is not poem it's poems because there was 100 elements we can check what will happen now. Now we have the second button there. 
send your poem for API and we got something. We got the JSON. So now we have all these elements. How we can then put these here as uh, poems? Let's see. Now we have this uh, uh, new poem function. So we will use that. And here we will probably use it somehow. Let's see. Well, there are now poems, which is an array of uh, array of of uh, po poems array full of poems so we can use for each to go through that and this is not what we want so each element we can call it actually a poem here we can use each element there and we will send each element to this function and as as it has it has the user id id and title and what we are going to use we are going to use title that's something useful and then we should give the vip status we will give false these are not very important uh, poems let's see what happens yes we got plenty of new poems here with this simple fetch code and now this is uh, one way to do it using this uh, fetch with a wait and a sync here we can use also another uh, method another way to build this same thing so without these awaits let's let's have this fetch once again and we are fetching the very same URL so let's have it and the fetch it can have several parameters but we will only need the URL here and now we are fetching it and then we can use these um, uh, JSON uh, JavaScript promises they are new new part of javascript so after the fetch is uh, kind of finished then we will move on and we will get the response and once again we will use the json and after that when that is finished then we will have a uh, data and what we will do with this data we can do whatever we want and we, as, as the wanted operation was to put it here as a as an, a poem uh, post-it notes we can then once again do some kind of a for each and every poem here and we can actually add this and now we can use true here and this should end here here and this should end here let's see if our function is working or not yeah now we got uh, very important poems as we uh, specified that these are these are important let's put it false and we will have not that important poems but these these things are pretty much the same either we call some function that is specified to have a sync and wait when the uh, operations are finished or we can use this javascript promises there are plenty of documentation in, in the internet and then we can use fetch what we are use, uh, getting this api this url after we have finished these steps we can then move on and do whatever we want with the 
uh, with the data we got so it's up to you which one you want to use to get some uh, Ajax uh, data from other services and then some Ajax thoughts so user input needs to be validated before they are saved to the database otherwise users could uh, input uh, harmful content to the uh, comment field for example and that's not good we don't want to get uh, code that can can steal data for example and the user is basically sending a uh, form with uh, various fields when he is for example writing a comment to facebook or anything like that and uh, the ser uh, ser service the web app can provide feedback that the form is okay or there are some fields that have some kind of input errors and uh, in the old days this required a page reload after submission so the form was submitted to the server and the server code checked that okay this form is okay or it, it is not and then the web page was reloaded and the user was told that this uh, field does not have a first name it has a number and number cannot be first name for example like that and uh, nowadays every field can be evaluated live client side with react or or vanilla js or what whatever you want to use so user gets faster and less frustrating feedback so while he is inputting the text there can be uh, uh, information showing that your password is not strong enough or your uh, your uh, username is already taken please select an, a new one while he is writing the username so this is in the sense that it's a, it's a huge improvement so you don't need to reload the web page the form itself fully again you can get the in necessary information in real time so with ajax server side checking can be implemented asynchronously so that the user does not notice anything so the browser is communicating with the server but the user has no idea about that he or she only shows that his password is not strong enough and it, that password might have been validated in the server side and it's always uh, important to validate on both sides both on client side which gives uh, user nice information so he or she won't frustrate and of course on the server side because there there is the implementation when you are saving for example the comment to the database and that has to be validated because of the security issues so that users cannot uh, save comments that include harmful code <clears throat> and as a conclusion JSON and Ajax provide us a way to get data from external service or from our own server without the need to reload the web page. This is a very strong part of modern web apps. And nowadays when we are using Google Docs or Facebook, the page is not reloading, but the data is getting to the database and new data is getting from the database from the background all the time and data is in data in json format can be read by human eye but is also easily used pragmatically and there are many ways to implement ajax but the latest javascript standards provides the fetch method which is quite easy to use